Let's take a moment of silence to steady ourselves and prepare to celebrate Al's life. God, we thank you for the breath of your spirit, the wind that, bro that blows through this place. We thank you for friends gathered far and near. We pray this day for Kathy and for Erica, and that the joy that we share about Al's life might continue to sustain us from this day forth and forevermore. Amen. If you are able, I would invite you to please stand for I'm going to try this way, Mark. OK. So I'm trying to avoid the wind that's catching in the microphone, but OK. I am resurrection, and I am life, says the Lord. Whoever has faith in me shall have life, even though they die. And everyone who has life and committed themselves to me in faith shall not die forever. None of us has life in himself, and none becomes his own master when he dies. If we have life, we are alive in the Lord, and if we die, we die in the Lord. So whether we live or die, we are the Lord's possession. Together we remember before God our brother Al to give thanks for his life, to comfort one another in grief. Father in heaven, we thank you because you have made us in your own image and given us gifts in body, mind, and spirit. We now thank you for all that Al has meant to each of us as we honor his memory. Make us more aware that you are the one from whom comes every perfect gift, including the gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ. Amen. Most merciful God, your wisdom is beyond our understanding. Deal graciously with Kathy and Larry, Erica and John in their grief. Surround them with your love that they may not be overwhelmed by their loss, but may have confidence in your goodness and strength to meet the days to come. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. If you turn to the back of your paper, I need one as well, we will say together the psalm. There we go, thank you. In unison, may God be merciful to us and bless us. Show us the light of his countenance and come to us. Let your ways be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you judge the peoples with equity and guide all the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has brought forth her increase. May God, our own God, give us his blessing. May God give us his blessing. And may all the ends of the earth stand in awe of him. I invite you to remain standing for the reading of the gospel.
a reading from the, our, the book of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory, Glory to, to you, you Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. For, the one, for one who is hired hand and not a shepherd, who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees, and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. They flee because they are hired hands and they care for nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own knows me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep, and I have uh, other sheep that are not of this fold, I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. Kindly be seated. I selected this particular gospel for Al because he always managed to draw people towards himself. And I think of the stories that we're going to hear in just a few moments in his early life about being ordained in the American Lutheran Church. And we're hopefully going to hear some stories about his work as a youth leader. One of the things that surprised me in compiling some of his effects were letters and school papers that were written when he would have been anywhere from a junior through a senior in high school. And he talked about his passion for being out of doors and just how much he loved animals. And this whole idea of gathering a youth group around him is a prime example. They're gonna hopefully tell you about stories going to New York City in VW cars and whatnot. But he influenced people and wanted, as a teacher, to have many children. Five to seven was the initial count. And I have no idea how many hundreds upon hundreds, actually probably thousands upon thousands, that he influenced in his life as a teacher in Iran and Indonesia. It is this feeling of a teacher that's always on the lookout for the welfare of their students that I believe ties so beautifully into this example of laying down one's life and one's convenience for the sake of others. When we were going through Al's apartment, one of the things that became apparent, now I'd been there many times, but just looking across the room, those of you who have been there, is how much of a world citizen, how much of a world citizen, oh, actually, I don't need that for this, this will be better. How much of a world citizen Al was in terms of not only the seven passports that he filled with travel, but the relationships that he maintained over the years and the reading that he did, which was so far and so broad. I have other sheep that are not of this fold. Some of them were Iranian, some of them were French. German, Indonesian, and many of them did listen to Al's voice. I happen to believe that what they were hearing in listening to him as a friend and teacher was that pastoral ministry, aware, concerned, and in love 
with people, with animals, with nature. I'm going to be quiet now and just and ask anyone who would like to come forward. I know that Bonnie Jean um, is going to be here and speak on behalf of herself and her sister, Linda. The rest of you get your stories ready, okay? My name is Bonnie Jean Flom. Okay, take a breath. I've lived in Northfield for 40 years. I met Al Gramstead when I was 12 years old. He was my youth pastor at Trinity Lutheran in Owatonna. And lucky for me and my 16-year-old sister at the time, Linda, he rented an apartment where our parents were the apartment managers. As a result, we had the privilege of time outside of church with Al. This including getting to know Al's delightful mother when she would visit from Brooklyn, New York. It also meant getting to know his menagerie of animals, including his beloved Tilly, the dissented skunk. My father would argue whether or not Tilly was dissented, but that's another story. <laughs> To know Al was to realize his immense intellect and how it stretched our own. But imagine being a first year confirmation student engaged in an in-depth study of the Book of Romans. I was in eighth grade. That was what we experienced in Al's confirmation class. No memorization, it was all reading, discussion, and essay tests. It was the 60s and beyond confirmation class, Al recognized the importance of addressing the issues of the day, whether through interpreting the lyrics of Dylan or Simon and Garfunkel songs as part of think and discuss classes on Wednesday nights, or by taking a group of high school students to Mankato to hear Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. deliver a speech. He recognized his responsibility to ensure we would think deeply about the roles each of us might play in the worlds we would pursue beyond high school. Al's years in Owatonna aligned with my sister's high school years. She recollects Luther League antics that involved chocolate-covered ants, hard-boiled egg tosses with an occasional raw egg tossed in, <laughs> and Easter breakfasts with high-velocity scrambled eggs in the mixer, and Easter breakfasts with the eggs on the walls of the kitchen now you can imagine how the ladies of the uh, kitchen felt about that. Um, we were rather sure Al's Volkswagen Beetle was one of the only ones in town, and the Luther Leaguers had great fun moving it to places where it didn't belong. Clearly, his role, in his role as youth pastor, Al Graham said succeeded in engaging with the young members of the Trinity Lutheran congregation and beyond our congregation as well. Not long after graduating from college, I visited Al at his mother's house in Brooklyn. Later that week, I could tell he was putting me to the test. You can see the grin on his face. This Minnesota girl who had scarcely ridden a city bus, much less a subway train, as he suggested we meet in the city before taking me to an off-Broadway show. He shared with me a rather complicated series of bus and train transfers that would lead me from where I was staying to our meeting place in Washington Square. In retrospect, whether navigating the streets of New York or contemplating the social inequities of the day, Al always enjoyed challenging me, and I was always the better for it. Al's visits to Minnesota prior to relocating here would involve stays with the Bogasons, and on occasion, stays at Pelican Lake with my sister and her husband, where Al would readily acquaint himself with the fish and fowl just as he did in my wooded backyard in Northfield during visits with my husband and me. His curiosity, as you well know, knew no bounds, as he maintained detailed list of the living things he would encounter in our backyard, living things that I, ever, having lived there many years, I wasn't aware of, but he was. I was thrilled when Al contacted me in over 17 years ago, informing me of his desire to move to Northfield 
where he could live in close proximity to his dear friends, Art and Marion Bogason. Art was the senior pastor in Oatana during Al's tenure there. Al wondered if I knew of any available apartments in Northfield. In fact, I told him, my good friend Karen Rue, who is here today, owned an apartment building in downtown Northfield that was perfectly situated between a grocery store and the library, and it would be available. I recall sketching out the floor plan and sending it via snail mail to Al in New York. Not long after, he rented the apartment, sight unseen, that he called home for the next 17 years. In fact, when Karen sold the building several years ago, she wrote into the purchase agreement that Al would be able to remain. I recall preparing the apartment for Al's arrival with Pastor Bogason with all the essentials, coffee, soup, pots and pans, basic kitchenware, and a large welcome sign. What a privilege it was to see these two friends greet each other upon Al's arrival in Northfield. It occurs to me now that when they began working together in 1961 in Owatonna, Al was a 26-year-old youth pastor arriving from Hawaii. And here they were in Northfield, 42 years later, in retirement, reuniting. His phone calls to Art just before bedtime each night were a very important part of Al's daily routine and an important part of Art's daily routine until Art's passing in 2011. Their friendship was very special. As you well know, Al was a great communicator through postcards, birthday cards, and perhaps the lengthiest Christmas cards <laughs> known to humankind. They sometimes took, as you may well know, days and maybe sometimes weeks to read. Many of you in attendance today likely received Al's birthday cards, as I did for many years. Interestingly, this year, he called me on July 1st to make sure he had my July 5th date correct, which of course he always did. As it turned out, it may well be that I was the last person who engaged in a conversation with Al, since by the day following this call, he had passed away. Whether that's the case or not, it's been my profound privilege to know him and to have had my awareness of this world from such a young age so significantly influenced by him. I acknowledge how I am filled with emotion today by this strange juxtaposition of Al's passing with the COVID pandemic, the passing of George Floyd, the recent tragic events in Kenosha, Wisconsin, and the turmoil of the current political campaigns. With the encouragement planted there when I was a mere 12-year-old, I pledged to have the necessary important conversations in the days to come as I hold up Al Gramstead, a true world citizen, in blessed memory and in vision and work toward a more just and equitable tomorrow. Thank you. People of God, of all saints, and I'm sure Al's friends have never been a silent bunch. Who's next? Thanks, Bonnie Jean, for those words. I did not know those things about Al. Thank you. So, like you said, I know Al from about 17 years ago. And so I, I know him in a whole different context. Every time I encountered Al, it was an adventure. And I'm just going to give you a couple of vignettes. <laughs> okay. I routinely took Al shopping. And one day, he wasn't waiting for me. One day, he was not waiting for me downstairs, how he usually is, and so I get all worried and upset. And, you know, at that time, John still owned the art frame shop down below, and I knocked on his door, and I said, John, John, I can't get a hold of Al. And I made him go up there. 
and see if Al was okay. And sure enough, Al just forgot to set his alarm or something like that. So he got ready and we went off and did our errands. So then another whole thing about us doing the errands is sometimes we did errands for a long time, all day. And a couple of times I would have to um, literally go into the store and try and find them. For example, I would drop him off at Menards and he would go in and I would wait in the car, read a book or make phone calls and eventually I'd fall asleep. And, and then I, w I would wake up going, oh, where's Al? And I'd trot into the store, come to find out, he went through the whole store looking for what he needed, then asked somebody where it was. They directed him way to the back of the store again, oh. and, and then it turns out they didn't have it, something like that. Another instance would be we would go grocery shopping together, and I'd wait for him at, like, Cub, where they have those the little lunch booths kind of by the door where you go outside of Cub. And I could see him down there at the checkout lane having a conversation with the checkout clerk, a long conversation. Turned to come to find out he brought the wrong credit card. So I went down there and used my credit card. But conversely, he's done the same thing for me. He's found me at the checkout lane, you know, digging in my pockets trying to find money. And so he's, he's bailed me out in that way too. Another uh, interesting, Al has had lots of injuries over his life, usually on my watch. And uh, again, at Cub, he would be at the checkout lane and I'd say, oh, I'm gonna go get the car. And so I'd meet him at the door while he's coming out with the cart and we'd get all loaded up and then go. Well, he liked to really return the cart to inside the store before he, he was done. So he was going back to turn the cart back in and and I'm getting in the car and getting all ready, and all of a sudden, I'm like, where's Al? And, I, and he, I couldn't see him because he had fallen face first on the concrete right outside the door of Cub. And of course, blood everywhere. And, and then another time, he was leaving his apartment to go to uh, Econo Foods. It was Econo Foods at that time, and he was cutting through the armory. Mm -hmm. Thought he could make a direct uh, cut through there, and mm -mm, no big old gash on, his, gash on his leg and had to go to the hospital and get stitches. So th those are some real fond memories I have of taking Al. It was always a, an adventure, but some of the visual images I want to leave you with with Al would be, he was the champion dandelion picker for all saints. He would, um, it, but it was his excuse, I think, to get a suntan. He would be out there on Division, I mean, Washington and Fifth Street, you know, reclining on the lawn, picking out the dandelions. So that's an image that will ever stay in my, in my mind. And um, the other one, what was the other one? Um, oh, his cats. Yeah. His many cats. But if you've all had the chance to meet Calvin, Calvin, Calvin. Uh, Calvin and Al were made for one another. He was the, the cat who had the most antics I'd ever seen of any cat. Anyway, Al, like uh, Bennett Bunny Jean said, his life was to educate you. He was always teaching me something. I learned a lot about the world from him, and I, I miss you, Al. Thank you. Well, I remember the dandelions, too. Seeing him stretched out, I was afraid once he had fallen, but he was just picking dandelions. I thought I'd talk next because uh, she mentioned cats. <laughs> and in addition to his other achievements and virtues, I'd just like to add that cat was, uh, Al was a founding member of the Black Cat Society. This had six members, three human and three feline. A nice touch of classical symmetry there. The members were Al and Cosmo, Richard and myself, and our two black cats, Chippy and Diogenes Laertius. Cosmo lived to the venerable age of 19 with perfectly trimmed toenails and his glucose under control. The vet thought his remarkably mellow personality 
reflected how closely Cosmos had bonded with his human. Indeed, Al loved all creatures, great and small, and plants too, as attested by his flourishing deck and that never-ending philodendron. <laughs> Um, so we were Al's neighbors for many years. He lived over the frame shop. We live in the greenhouse next to the church. And you could see Al from our front porch. And he'd be out feeding his birds, feeding his squirrels, lowering things up and down from the balcony. Um, and because we were so you know, f nearby, he would stop by to pick the rhubarb or borrow something. Um, he, I think many of us probably pitched in and helped him run errands. Um, and he was this, this presence. <laughs> and you know, th obviously the first image I have of Al is picking the dandelions. Um, and I didn't really know who this fellow was. And, and at some gathering or other of church folks, I sat next to him and I said, you know, so what brought you to Northfield? And he'd get a little piece of, of, you know, oh, I had family in the area. Okay, well, and the longer you talked, oh, well, it turned out he taught English in Iran during the hostage crisis. <laughs> and you'd, you'd talk to Al a little bit more, and you'd get this little piece of, oh, Al, I, I love your shirt. Where'd you get it? Well, I lived in Indonesia for many years, um, or a friend from Indonesia sent this. And when I'd be talking to people in the church or new visitors, I'd always say, that's Al you got to go find out about Al. Al is, he is, there is much more than meets the eye. Um, and um, one day it was icy and I was walking downtown and, um, or no, I, I saw an ambulance in front of Al's and so, you know, scoot down and there's Al He'd fallen and broken his hip outside the apartment, and um, so I said, absolutely, I'm you know, going to call Marshall and Carla, because I knew they were, you know, possibly his closest church family. And I then had the responsibility of, of feeding the cats um, <laughs> while he was in the hospital, and I'd go visit him. And, and I went up there the first time to feed his cats, and I remember looking around that apartment and it was filled with beautiful art from all over the world, um, mostly Asia. And just walking in there and there were collections of shells and beautiful rocks and carpets and paintings and textiles. And my jaw just dropped because again, pieces of Al you don't know and um, And he cared about people so much. I, so many of I still have an unopened birthday card from Al. Um, and I hesitated to open it. It just sits on my, my desk. Um, but every anniversary, every birthday, all the children. Um, there were a few winters, Christmases, where Christmas presents would show up on our front step. Um, I'm pretty sure I knew where they came from. They never had names on them. Um, and he, 
he clearly had such an interest in people. That's one of the reasons you could never quite find out about Al, is because he was always finding out about you, always thinking about other people, always telling you about other people. Um, and so I just, um, I'm so glad we've been able to have a gathering and to hear Bonnie Jean's stories and um, how one person can touch so many lives in such different ways. Um, yeah. I Oh, and talking to neighbors, you know, after he passed, or, you know, I'd be talking to folks and, oh, you know, this, this member of our congregation passed, and, and Al, and so many people would be like, oh yeah, I know that guy. And you'd be like, really, well how? And it was all something different. Um, he made connections um, everywhere, and um, that is an example that I definitely hope to follow. Um, thank you. Al and I shared an interest in science fiction. And <coughs> one day I was re uh, recalling a, a, a book that I had read, uh, a novel, a science fiction novel, in about 1965 when I was a teenager. And I, I told him what a wonderful story it was. And he said, would you like to read it again? And I said, oh, no, it's probably hard to find. He had the paperback copy of it you know, among his 200 science fiction novels out in the hall outside of his apartment, and he loaned it to me, and I did read it again, and it was wonderful. <laughs> Lucky me, I was the landlord <laughs> that had rules, no cats, no smoking, <laughs> until I met Al. <laughs> and I realized that those rules were not important any longer. So Al was the lifelong resident at that building. Um, my friend and partner at the time, Gwen, and I ran a studio downstairs and uh, uh, got to know Al in many different ways, but my best memory is when we were cleaning out our studio, hauling out all the boxes, all the treasures, and there in the back of the garage was, in the middle of the day, a bat. <laughs> what do we do? <laughs> we call up Al, and Al's just like, splendid! <laughs> he rushes down, gets the bat, I'm sure made a home for him upstairs, built a bat house. Anyway, I love that word. As much as I remember Al, Splendid is the word I'll never Splendid. forget. Splendid. <laughs> would any of our smaller people like to, uh, shorter people like to come forward and say anything? I would like to invite us to, you can remain seated, but on the back of your sheet there is a response for the prayers of the people, which is simply, Lord, hear our prayer. I'd like to thank Bonnie, Bonnie Sherman. Come on up. Um, Kate is, uh, yep, she's coming up there. You know, those sling chairs are very hard. Bonnie Sherman wrote these prayers as she writes many of our prayers. So. Okay. Great. Thank you. 
God is the great I am, in whose name we pray, responding, Lord, hear our prayer. That we may open our ears to the cries of those who suffer, freeing them from enslavement to poverty, abuse, fear of brutality, and lack of opportunity, and taking our share in the saving acts of God. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That Donald <clears throat> and the leaders of the nations may lead their people with integrity, honoring all that is past and moving into the challenges that define a new life. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the courage to lift up our crosses to the light of day, carrying them on our journey of faith, uniting ourselves with the Christ of the Passion so as to share in the glory of his resurrection, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That we be given the strength to leave behind the fruits of temptation, turning our gaze upon that which is nourishing and sound, living a life of love, honor, and respect for others, full of rejoicing and thanksgiving, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all laborers and first responders, that they may, may receive a safe working environment, fair wages, the companionship of fellow workers, and the respect of those who exercise authority over them. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For Andrew Reed Halverson, as we surround him with our love, and for all who have died, especially those who will die today, that they may all have a place in God's kingdom. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For Al Graham said, a faithful member of all saints, whose life and ministry we celebrate this day. Lord, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. May the name of God be grafted on our hearts as we continue our prayers. For those entrusted to our care, Tim, Gail, Bruce, and the Halverson Gleason families, the Gramstead family, and for Tom, Ginny, Tom and Pauline, Debbie, Sarah, Courtney and Chloe Jane, Veronica and Bob, Susan, Janet, David, and those whose names we add. For Lisa, Brad, for the repose of the soul of Hunter. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For persons with COVID-19, and for those who provide and care for them, remembering Cassandra, Zibby, Christiana, Carla, Roberta, Marshall, and Bob, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those celebrating birthdays this week, Bob Rao, Renata Kurth, Gail Halverson, Sarah Burkbile, and those celebrating anniversaries, Stephanie and Gregory Ennis last Tuesday, Elizabeth and Tom Campbell this Thursday, that they may continue to grow in your love and service, let us pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. This is you again. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things, splendid in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people 
and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. So. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm particularly thankful for Al's vodka today. All right. If you could stand over here just in case. Okay. Mm hmm. Those of you who are able, please stand. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. We give thanks to God for the beauty of life revealed in all creation, the one who knows our names and shepherds us in pathways unknown, the God of the people of Israel, the great I am, who reveals himself in Jesus and in one another. We recall our brother Al before God. and we are grateful for his life and witness. We recall our Lord Jesus Christ who rose victorious from the dead and comforts us with the blessed hope of everlasting life. For to your faithful people, O Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when our mortal body lies in death, there is prepared for us a dwelling place eternal in the kingdom. And so we join with Al's parents, Katerina and Eric, with Al and all the saints and angels who proclaim you as we say, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise you, O God, for the salvation of the world through Jesus Christ, our Lord, and we remember Al's friends and students scattered across the world, and particularly in the countries of Iran and Indonesia, in the cities of New York, Owatonna, and Northfield. On the night before Jesus was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. 
recalling now his suffering and death, and waiting and celebrating his resurrection and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Accept, O Lord, our sacrifice of praise in this memorial of our redemption. Send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts and let them be for us the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. And grant that all who eat this bread and drink this cup may be filled with your life and goodness. And may the sacrament that we are about to receive grant forgiveness of sin and all other benefits of Christ's redeeming work and renewal of the Holy Spirit. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now we pray in the words our Savior Christ has taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Let us pray. Eternal God, you gather your people from around the world. You reach out to us through technology. You reach out to us through love. We thank you for those who have gathered this day, those who were unable to be here. And we thank you that the grace of this Holy Communion sustains us week in, week out, month in, month out, and that you continue to renew your people. Bless, O oh Lord, each one in the path about to be driven away from this place to everyday life. Help us as we remember both the blessings and the shortcomings of our brother Al to remember that you are the God who embraces all. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Friends, let us mill in peace. Thanks be to God. Oh, sorry, that's her line. Go ahead. You, you make up your own line. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.